Hello and welcome to NB Drives. My name is Nishmanya and today I'm driving the 2023 Tata Safari facelift. Now Tata has been pretty good at updating its model range over the years and the Safari is no exception. It's been roughly two years since the model launched and Tata has updated it quite a few times but that's largely to do with features on the inside. This being a comprehensive facelift means it's got new styling on the outside and an updated interior, like a seriously updated interior. And along with that, Tata has also made a few mechanical tweaks to the car, from its suspension to NVH levels, we'll get into that a little later. So I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know about this facelifted version of the Safari, and uh, tell you where I think it sits in its competition right now. So stay tuned for the full review and let's get into it. Alright, so before we get into this review, let me just clarify, this is not a generational change, it is still a facelift. Even though Tata has done a really good job of differentiating this from the pre-facelift model. There's a whole lot that's changed, but Tata has been very clever about how they've updated this car. There isn't a whole lot that's changed in terms of its sheet metal, that means the large body panels like the hood, door, uh, fenders, they've all stayed unchanged. But because Tata always had these big bumpers on the Safari, which you can see extend up until here, they've been able to reprofile the bumper and front end quite a bit to give it a very different look. Now, things I like up front here are these headlights. They're still split units with the daytime running light up top and the main unit down here. But it's now rectangular instead of the older models, uh, more elongated shape. And... Uh, they also have this cool safari lettering in between the headlights, which I think is a nice touch. Now the hood has stayed unchanged, but the grill is now better integrated with this DRL line. You can see it uh, flows almost effortlessly down into the main grill section, which has body colored elements that I think look fairly premium and modern. Uh, another thing we have to talk about is the daytime running light itself. This is now a full width unit and I think it looks really nice. It looks modern and definitely helps differentiate it from the old model. A uh, keen eye among you will also notice that there is a four skid plate down here, but it is not real, it's plastic. Just painted silver to make it look metallic. So do be aware of that if you're going to go off-roading with this thing. And um, yeah, apart from that, you can see there are the ADAS sensors that are reside here and front camera is also out here. On the whole, I do think Tata has done a good job with the design of this facelift as it does look quite different compared to the older model. And um, yeah, I think it makes it look far more modern than it is. It can even fool a few people into thinking it's an all new safari. Now, before I get to the side profile of the Safari, I want to walk you through the rear styling of this SUV as that's where more changes have taken place. First up, there's the new taillights. These have been better sculpted and reprofiled a little bit to give the SUV a smarter look. I also like this full width light bar, which mimics the styling up front. This also makes the SUV look far more contemporary than the outgoing model. Uh, the other big change at the rear is the bumper, which as you can see gets these new rectangular reflector elements. And because it's a little more boxy, it gives the weight at the rear that was sort of lacking on the previous model. Uh, I think this suits the slightly uh, more muscular look the facelift Safari is going for. The other change is also down here, there is a new uh, skid plate design. It is a four skid plate again, like the front, it's just painted silver. Um, besides that, not much else has changed. The tailgate shape remains the same. Uh, if you actually look carefully, the housing for the taillights also remains the same as what it was before, apart from the middle element. So, Tata has not had to rework the design of the tailgate either. And uh, this integrated spoiler was also there before. I still think it looks quite sleek and adds a athletic look to this SUV. And uh, Tata has 
integrated this nice little Easter egg out here of lions on the windshield. That's a nice cool little touch that only people who come up close to the new safari would know about. Now while I had the safari facelift, I just had to try out the hands-free boot function which as you can see on this video does not work very accurately. I just couldn't get it to open for me on camera but off camera a few times I tried it, it did open up. It's not the most consistent though. However, there's no need to be concerned as the tailgate can be opened electrically from a switch under the Tata logo and it can even be shut electrically. Boot space on offer is a little tight. With all three rows up, there's only 73 liters of space. But that can be expanded up to 1550 liters if you fold the third row and the second row down. As I said in the start of the video, Tata has been very smart about how they've updated the 2023 Safari as there have been no major sheet metal changes to the car and this is most apparent when viewed from the side. The fenders, the doors, the roof, all of that stay completely unchanged as does the glass house. The only main differences are the new Safari badging on the front doors and these 19 inch diamond cut alloy wheels that I think look so nice and premium and really suit the safari and to be honest I'm trying to figure out whether I can get them installed on my own Tata Hexer. Here in the front seats you can see exactly where Tata has spent most of its time tinkering with the safari facelift. You get this new touchscreen infotainment system up here. This is a 12.3 inch unit only available on the top spec car and it is extremely slick to operate like it's quite responsive you can see it's got your AC controls it's got uh, uh, your mood lighting settings which you can access from here of course it's also got wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay so I'm connected for Android Auto right now and uh, you get your maps, music app, all that stuff you also get this really cool ambient lighting strip that runs all the way across the dash and it doesn't stop here, it goes along on the sunroof. Quite neat, when it gets a little darker out, I'll show you guys that in a little more detail. Uh, some other touches that uh, Tata has done here include the new forward insert. Now from a distance it looks fine. It looks fairly premium. It's pinstripe wood. Uh, up close it feels more plasticky. I wish there was a little bit of texture added in that it really made it feel more premium. What I can't complain about is the soft touch plastics used up here on the dash. They make the car feel more premium as well as the leather lining on the door cards which again are points that you touch fairly often and uh, you would appreciate the soft touch materials the other big changes on the inside are this new gear selector which looks quite cool and is quite nice to use but it's a little cumbersome when you're switching between drive and reverse I wish there was a slightly slicker mechanism for that. Uh, apart from that, there's also a dial with a small screen, circular screen that shows you your drive modes. There's normal, there's wet road and there is rough road. Uh, apart from that, you got a slightly awkwardly positioned wireless charger. You can get big phones in there, it's just the angle at which it's put. Sliding the phone in without pressing any of the buttons or uh, scraping the phone against either this charging ports or the rotary dial is a little bit tough. Uh, another thing I'm not completely sold on are these uh, touch based climate controls. Now I agree they look quite slick but in operation I have spent most of the day driving and every time I wanted to reduce the AC fan speed, I have struggled. I reach for it and it just doesn't react. Uh, there are some other cool bits like the central locking is there out here. 
you can access your 360 degree cameras which are really high resolution i like how these cameras have been optimized for this car you even get a cool 3d view that lets you scroll around the entire exterior uh, and it's quite accurate placing the car uh, besides that i also have to make a mention of the 10 speaker jbl sound system it really is one of the better sound systems i think it's the best right now in this segment it sounds quite crisp it's mids are nice and pronounced and it's bass i am a bass head and the subwoofer in the boot really brings the bass to life you can really feel it in the seat especially on you know the bass heavy tracks so that's something i really enjoy and uh, we also have the instrument cluster it's a digital 12.2 inch unit and it has plenty of features that you can cycle through on the whole, I think Tata has done a great job with this cabin. Um, it feels fresh, it feels modern. Uh, there are some cheap plastics lower down, scratchy plastics, but at this price point, they're gonna have to cut corners somewhere. So I guess that's where they've done it, places where you'd interact with less often. The driver's seat gets six-way power just with three memory functions, while the passenger seat only gets four-way adjustment. However, both seats do get manual lumbar adjustment, and on the top spec variant, they even get seat ventilation with three different fan modes. So, here in the back of the Safari, there is actually plenty of space on offer, as there was before. Uh, if you look here, there is a decent amount of knee room on offer and I also have a decent amount of headroom on offer as well. Now this seat is set to my driving position roughly. I'm six foot tall and uh, it's quite roomy for me out here. There are some other new additions here like this retractable sunlight. It's manually operated and it's great at cutting the sun out and keeping you a little cooler on those hot summer days. You also get this central armrest that folds down and it's got two cup holders. Down here, there's a storage spot for your phone and uh, there's even a nifty little tray down here in uh, the door bin where you can also store your phone if you want. Outer passengers can do that. Uh, there are conveniently positioned pockets in the seat backs. Uh, they won't take a whole lot, maybe a few magazines and of course, this front seat on the Accomplish Plus trim gets the boss mode function, which is quite convenient when you wanna just stretch out. So you just hit those two buttons. You can push this forward and get it out of the way. Takes a second. And you can even recline the seat back uh, I forgot to mention that these headrests also now get these winglets uh, as standard they're flat as you can see right now and if you fold them outwards it helps secure your head in place so that if you're napping you won't get tossed around as much and your neck won't fall to one side and give you a prick. So these are nice thoughtful features that have been added in and since the Safari's cabin was already quite comfortable, this just takes the rear seat experience a notch higher. Now, I'll hardly ever be found in the last row of any 3-row SUV or MPV. I prefer the driver's seat, but just to show you guys what it's like, I am going to try and squeeze back there. So this is the bench version. Uh, you also get a captain seat version with two captain seats in the middle row that is slightly more expensive and uh, it also gets ventilated seats for the middle row passengers as we got in the front seat. 
uh, but those don't tumble forward so if you want to get in there's a very narrow opening to get in alternatively you can squeeze in between them sure the opening is much better and I'm gonna try and squeeze in so I'll just get the door now the seat is set to the same position it was before and yep that is just upright in its standard form as you can see I really don't have a lot of space back here my knees are basically up against the front bench now you can come to a little bit of a compromise with the middle seat passenger if they if they slide their seat forward a little okay so this is the middle row now all the way forward uh, it's a little better for me in terms of the knee room I have about that much it's about a centimeters worth of space and uh, I am sat quite knees up as you can see basically no under thigh support so this seat was definitely not designed for six footers I can however put the headrest up and my hair is brushing up against the headliner so I'm a little concerned on bumpy roads I'll probably end up hitting the roof but apart from that uh, shorter passengers will be decently happy back here they are their own individual AC controls as well as a type A and a type C charging port and AC vents here on the C pillars so short distances I would be fine sitting here I would not want to do very long distances back here and uh, shorter people would be able to do medium length distances without getting too uncomfortable but that's just how the third row of most SUVs in this segment is now we can't talk about the interior without touching upon the all-important sunroof. Just like the pre-facelift model, the new Safari also gets a large electronically operated panoramic sunroof which opens quite a ways back and has a neatly integrated sun blind in it as well. The new Tata Safari facelift continues to offer single engine option under the hood. It's a 2 litre 4 cylinder turbo diesel engine sourced from Stellantis and we've seen this engine in a number of different models already in our market such as the Jeep Compass and the MG Hector. Tata hasn't changed anything in terms of the tune of the engine as it still produces 170 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. Now, in terms of handling, the new Safari is quite interesting because of its electric power steering which has done away with the issues I had with the older car where the hydraulic steering always felt too heavy at low speeds and not heavy enough at higher speeds. This has sort of corrected that as uh, the electric power steering can artificially weigh up the steering as per the requirement. So at low speeds, it definitely feels much lighter and easier to use around town. And it also weighs up really well as you start picking up speed through these corners. And uh, gives you a decent amount of feedback as well. Do know that this isn't the most interactive steering or communicative steering though. It does feel a little bit uh, like it lacks that precision that you would want from a proper handling SUV but it's quite good for what it is and compared to its rivals it does do a decent job actually it does a pretty good job uh, also note there are paddle shifters on this steering wheel which are uh, finished to look metallic but they're actually plastic as you can hear from the tapping and uh, while I do appreciate these paddles and they are quite tactile to use, they really don't give you a whole lot of control when it comes to driving this Safari. Uh, example here, I'd want to switch down drive mode. and it engages sports drive mode. But if I want to switch down any further, the car tells me that there's a transmission warning. It does not want me to 
switch gears just so that it can save the transmission or give it a longer life. Same thing, if I go up the gear, it'll let me go up one, but if I want to go any further, it'll give me the same warning, like I won't be allowed to cruise in a higher gear. Now, in terms of maneuverability, as I said, the steering, again, it becomes really nice and light at low speeds, which is actually very convenient, and the turning circle is also quite decent, as you can see here. I really didn't think I'd be able to make that, but oof, I did. However, speaking of the transmission, the transmission itself is a six-speed automatic unit, a uh, torque converter, and it is quite smooth going through the gears. It uh, shifts up and shifts down fairly well. It's a little slower on shifting down gears. Activated. Yes, I understood. That's another thing this car does quite often. If you're in sports mode and you're not uh, really using the paddle shifters, it will switch you back down to city mode. So that can be a little frustrating. But uh, coming back to the gearbox, it is quite smooth. It's not the fastest unit out there. Uh, it definitely takes a few seconds, like a s one or two seconds to switch down gears when you put your foot on the throttle and want to pick up some pace. Coming back to the gearbox, there are different drive modes in this. So as you heard, there was sports mode. There's also an eco mode, uh, which again, it doesn't really alter much in terms of the gearbox. It just makes the mapping of the throttle a little more uh, city focused. So it dulls it down a little bit. And in sports, that throttle mapping also becomes a little more reactive and uh, yeah, it becomes more responsive to your inputs. It also tries to hold on to gears a little longer, but like here for instance, there it took a second to drop down gears. Now since we were on the subject of handling, I also want to make a note of the fact that the Safari's body roll is fairly well contained. Now don't get me wrong, there is some body roll and uh, it's quite noticeable when you're going faster through corners. But the monocoque chassis that this has, which is derived from the Land Rover D8 platform, uh, really shines through in the way this car deals with corners. Uh, it really feels quite tight and uh, it does not make you feel like, uh, you know, it's too top heavy, which is great, especially given the overall height of this SUV being about almost just under six feet tall and uh, there's also a sense of reassurance when you're going at highway speeds with the car feeling quite stable now that's also benefited from this uh, new electronic steering wheel which definitely feels more uh, weighty as you pick up the pace which is quite a nice thing so this car also has level 2 ADAS and uh, what that means is, well technically it's not level 2 yet, it's level 2 capable, largely because of this one button here which the lane keep assist, which is a feature that's not yet come to the Safari, it will come in the future according to the car maker as part of like an OTA update to consumers, but um, for right now, it's essentially just, uh, uh, it can do autonomous emergency braking, so help you, it slows you down on its own automatically, uh, if it detects there's a crash either with a pedestrian or with a vehicle. And uh, it has a blind spot monitor, it has a lane change assist, which is quite cool if you see the indicators. If I go left, the left camera turns on for me to show me my blind spot, same thing with the right and uh, it also gets uh, adaptive cruise control which works fairly well from my uh, minor testing on uh, city freeways it does uh, adapt to the car in front of you fairly nicely it picks up pace when it does up to the limit that you've set however the AEB can be a little unpredictable when you're driving in our road conditions, uh, there's some times when it just 
does not slow down in time. Uh, you can even change how sensitive the autonomous emergency brake is. And even with it set at the highest setting, sometimes when you're closing into the car in front of you, it just does not slow down enough. And uh, I anyway find these systems fairly iffy. So I would much rather you just focus on the road and uh, judge your braking distances yourself. Another thing that I really want to talk about is this horn. Like, I really like the steering wheel, the new four-spoke. It feels quite premium. I like this dual-tone finish that they've given it. It feels very Land Rover-esque, uh, which is a very good thing. However, I do not like this. This is There's an illuminated logo right here. It's gloss black plastic, very prone to getting fingerprints, as you can see. And the horn, it just, it does not deploy. Look, I'm pressing it and there's not much happening here. Like you really have to press it for it to do anything. So that is a design aspect that I don't think many people will like, especially with how often horns are used in this country. So just keep that in mind when you try this car out. What I also really like are these digital instrument cluster dials. Uh, they're very neat, they're very modern, they're easy to read, legibility is quite good. There's even sunlight coming from behind me and it's buried deep into the binnacle. So it's uh, not really very hard to look at even in harsher lighting conditions, which is a problem some digital instrument dials have. Uh, there's also a fair amount of customizability to it and uh, like for instance if i do put on my uh, android auto i can then view the maps which is the google maps on my instrument cluster even when we talk about the power delivery of the new safari it's fairly uh, strong in terms of its power delivery its mid-range is nice as you'd expect with a turbo diesel there's enough torque low down in the rev range as well making it easy to drive around town uh data has claimed that they have made the nvh better and it's ever so slightly nicer than the pre-facelift car uh, but you really have to be in them back to back to be able to tell the difference. I actually rode in the pre-facelift car yesterday and uh, slight difference in the vibration levels. Noise honestly is still very much a factor in this car, especially as you rev it out. As you put your right there, you put the foot down, this engine is going to make noise and there's just not enough sound deadening to make it a very quiet experience and that takes away a little bit from the refinement levels of this engine because otherwise the safari is quite nice i really do like its ride quality even riding on these massive 19 inch wheels which i really like how they look uh, there is a little bit of uh, the shocks from being both small and large road imperfections that definitely does come into the cabin but it's not too hard like the tires do end up taking the edge off it and i really do think that this was always one of the better riding suvs in this segment and it still maintains that on the whole i think tata has done a great job with the 2023 safari facelift as it really has up the quotient of not only the styling on the outside with a very comprehensive makeover but also on the interior with the quality going up and plenty of features coming in. However, it is hard to talk about the Safari without mentioning the fact that it still does not get a 4x4 system which is something diehard Safari fans have wanted since day one. And we also have to take into account the fact that it does not come with a petrol engine option and is only limited to the diesel option at the moment. So that does restrict the choice a little bit for buyers. However, compared to the other rivals in the segment such as the Mahindra XUV700, Mahindra Scorpio, 
MG Hector Plus, the Toyota Innova Crista, and to a lesser extent, the Toyota Innova High Cross. The Safari offers plenty of value and some features that are first for the segment. And the SUV also has an air of ruggedness that not all its competitors have. All in all, the Safari is a very solid choice for anyone looking for a 7-seat SUV under the 30 lakh rupee mark. I hope you guys enjoyed the review of the 2023 Tata Safari facelift. I know I was very eager to get behind the wheel of this SUV. Partly because I kept benchmarking it against my own Tata Hexa which is a car I really like. So I was really anticipating this review. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on the new Safari down in the comment section below. As well as what your favorite SUV under the sub 30 lakh rupee price mark is. If you enjoyed this video, do hit that like button, consider subscribing and do share this video with anyone else who you think would like this sort of automotive content. I have much more stuff headed your way in the near future. My next video will go live next Friday. So stay tuned for that and cheers.